right, uh, so I'm going to try recording track 25 from the All Audio Recorder. Seriously, um, over the past half century, attitudes have significantly changed uh, towards whales, and Ken is a big reason for that. There is no doubt in my mind. <laughs> in the early 1960s, whales were still being hunted when a young college student named Ken Dotham signed on to a whaling ship. I was just a tiny little boy at that time, about three. And uh, when whaling was occurring off the coast of California, this was an opportunity for this biology student to actually learn about the whales from the whales. Now, obviously, this isn't exactly how we do it now, but that's the point. We don't do it now in the United States of America, but he learned some significant things. Uh, when whaling ended in the USA in the late 60s, his thirst for understanding the natural world continued. <laughs> Uh, banding birds on Midway Island. I remember that trip. That was a lot of fun. I got a heck of a tan. My mom didn't even recognize me when I came back. <laughs> I was so dark and my hair was so blonde. She looked right past me at the airport waiting for me and I was standing there. <laughs> but this isn't about me. Um, in the Navy, dropping sonar buoys. He listened to the sounds of whales. So imagine serving in the Navy and dropping sonar buoys to try to find submarines and listen to the beautiful sounds of humpbacks and all the whales of the ocean as well. So this again continued to feed his hunger for this. So then in 1975, he was awarded a contract to study orcas in the Puget Sound San Juan Islands. What? Oh, there it is. No, that's actually still, this is a soda beer. Yeah, this is the bird. Yeah, where is this actually? With this shot. Yeah, that's uh, near Samoa. <laughs> yeah, he has traveled, he has traveled more parts of the world than you, are, you know, all of us probably combined, not to mention seeing probably most of the species of whales throughout the world. Our, our list of wishes to see whales probably equals the, the numbers that he has seen. Um, okay, then in 1975, here we go. Notice Cameron's always in the shot. Then in 1975, he was awarded a contract to study orcas in the Puget Sound, San Juan Island region. And his life and so many others would never be the same. Orca survey is recognized as the most unique photo ID study in the world. And that's true, that's an amazing statement. Um, the databases are, are incredible. The 40 year study is now unique in all the world. That's the original orca, the, the original boat. Um, at the early stage, the study proved the population could not sustain captures. Could not sustain captures. They said there were thousands out here, 
and they wanted to continue. And in 1976, the first year of the study, proved that there were less than 80, and there's no way that that population could sustain captures of killer whales. So SeaWorld left, but they didn't stop. They just moved to Iceland and other places like that. Wow. All right. Um, as the years passed, the study became an invaluable tool to, to study orcas and the orca society. Again, sorry for my scribbled notes. <laughs> Trying to sneak this together while I have the whole Dolphin plan going. <laughs> the Dolphin super pop. Orca survey not only informed the science community, but also the general public. As whales culturally became popular, people from all over the world came to this place, these very islands, these very whales, to see for themselves the wonder of these magnificent orca. He founded the Whale Museum in 1979 to educate the public. He established Center for Whale Research to continue the orca survey study. Ken's list of whale species that he's seen throughout the world is, is in, un, uh, un, unimaginable. Which, by the way, he also authored, what, half a dozen books on the subject? Ken's reach and impact on our world's understanding of whales has been a ripple effect that cannot be measured. There's just no way to know how many thousands, hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of people that have been touched indirectly or directly by what my father has done. years after studying or starting Orca Survey, we find ourselves here tonight, gathered to celebrate both the Orca and the man. Just my father, Ken Malcolm. So 
the Washington Coast uh, Bears beat well. Washed up. He looks pretty happy there, huh? <laughs> Probably if he could if he could choose, this is what he would do every day. Um, but he's also become incredibly um, vocal in what needs to happen for these whales. He's put himself outside his comfort zone. He, he really would rather be on a boat and uh, studying the whales that he knows so well. But he's, uh, he takes the time um, to go to congressional offices. He goes uh, to meetings and workshops to try and figure out what to do for these whales. And so it's, it's not, um, uh, it's, it, it's the things that needs to be done and he's doing that, uh, that now. Um, this is a showing right here in this theater of Sonic Sea. If you guys haven't had a chance to see it, it's a fabulous movie that was put out by NRDC about sound in the ocean, and it um, heavily features Ken. And then, you know, this is just another example of people coming by the center to, to talk about whales, to talk about salmon. This is Michael O'Leary. Are you here? He's probably watching whales on the west side. He's a salmon. He's a salmon um, uh, person that deals with salmon, and um, so we have people coming by the center all the time. And Ken makes time to talk to them. It's um, <clears throat> again a humbling person to work for and with. Uh, people media. We've had uh, 18 people in the media call or come out and, um, and interview or film him just since I've been working there in November. Just to give you an idea of how many people come through to, to study these animals. This is a German film crew. There's a film showing in Germany uh, on August 2nd in um, southern Germany mostly. And there's Ken doing his thing, educating people. Great photo by a um, naturalist on the island, Tracy Walters, got this, with, uh, this photo with Ken and um, his whales. And that's Ken digging in. I mean, he's got more energy for a 75-year-old than I have it, slightly less old than that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he helped lift that canopy that was, I don't know, 350 pounds off, off of our new boat. Uh, he's always the one that's out there cleaning the boats, and he's kind of the consummate uh, whale researcher, and I'm, I'm just, again, honored to, to be a part of his team. I am saying anything. <laughs> I think I'm being forced into it. Um, that's okay. Story of my life. <laughs> I just want to say thanks, Ken, on a personal note. Um, I know we met outside of Kings 13 years ago, and you said, hey, what are you doing this summer? And I was like, nothing. He's like, do you want to work at the Center for Well Research? I was like, sure. I had no idea that I'd be here uh, 13 years later, and um, thanks for changing my life. Appreciate it. 6th of uh, July, 2007. Got some great calls. This is the Brocklehurst System LabCorp at the house. <laughs> 